Constitution of the United States, and you know that unquestionable. No, I think that it, they should be regulated like any other dangerous thing, like a car. And I don't want to see more guns. I think more guns. Well, would cars be kill more people than guns. Yeah. Well. So there's some bats, so knives, and yeah, so uh, let's get rid of all the cars. I think we should get rid yeah, of. All how them. about the bats too? You think we should get rid of bats and knives and everything? Yeah. So uh, it's uh, you know that one. I think that's a, a policy discussion that is. I don't want to tie in to the fear that people have about ISIS. See this uh, flag right here? That flag, man, was built on the Second Amendment. The Founding Fathers have thousands of quotes about how important the Second Amendment is. What are your thoughts on that? It was also built on the First Amendment and the Thirteenth Amendment yeah, and the, the Fifth Amendment. The Second Amendment is the one that protects us and keeps yeah. us safe. No, that's the one you value more, and I value other ones more. I'm a proud owner of two guns right now, and I'm, I've done it legally. I've, I've gone through the process of getting my guns legally. And you know what? I have a right to defend myself. I have a right to defend my home. I have a right to defend my family. And as long as I do it responsibly, every gun owner should be responsible for their actions. But if you do it responsibly, you go through the proper processes and, and, and get your background checks done, Absolutely. We should not have our Second Amendment right taken away from us by our government. More guns, less crime. That's uh, proven. You notice attacking the countries with gun control. You don't see them in Switzerland. No, not in Switzerland. In France, they take the guns. It looks like a, looks like a gun-free zone. Yep. So they're, they're having a, a you know, free ride over there. Even the French president, French president has, has, is on the record right now stating that he believes they made a terrible mistake by disarming their citizens. Um, and I would just reflect on that and say that's even more of a reason for uh, not only Rhode Islanders, but just all uh, Americans to, to not be afraid to exercise their Second Amendment rights because, uh, frankly, we can't allow ourselves to be sitting ducks. We are not, and I don't mean disrespect, but we are not the French. We are not any of these other nations that have embraced gun control and gun confiscation. We have uh, a constitutionally protected, God-given right to bear arms and protect ourselves, and we should not be afraid to exercise that right. You guys have the exclusive for, which is a product called Deep Cleanse. And why I'm so excited about it is it's a unique formula, almost like the iodine crystals. We have two unique products that nobody in the world has. One of the most amazing ingredients in the world, and it's called shilajit. And it's actually known as blood of the mountain or rock sweat because thousands of years ago, as a matter of fact, this ingredient was only given to the elite of the elite. Thousands of years ago, up in the Himalayan mountains and in Tibet. And we wanted to put this in, in stuff for, for a couple of years, but we couldn't get an organic form. Right. I mean, so I, let's explain. I mean, we, this stuff's so good, we couldn't put it out for years. Right. So I had to actually, it's kind of like the iodine crystals, finding a source deep in the earth that we could get the cleanest source available. But in Tibet and in Nepal and in the Himalayan mountains, Thousands of years ago, they found, they watched these monkeys. And during the summer months, the monkeys would go up into the mountains. Now you're being racist against monkeys. And they would pick this black substance from the mountains. And so uh, in Russia, they actually, it, it, it grows in Russia in the mountains and in the Himalayas and only in the summer. And Chilajit is actually the decomposition of seven, up to 7,000 different medicinal herbs. So it decomposes, all these different herbs decompose in the Himalayan mountains and the volcanic soil up there. And what happens in the summertime... So it's almost like an oil up. from... Yes, it's high in fulvic acid, it's high in humic acid. Because they're, they're always claiming down. oil is really from decomposed animals and plants. There is some oil that is based from fossils, but most of it's really abiotic. But so, so this is a true fossil uh, source. I mean, explain it to me. It is. A, it's really the decomposition, like I said, of over seven thousand different medicinal herbs and plants. And it and with the rocks and the pressure deep in the mountains, it freezes and and during the summertime and the pressures build it up. It oozes out. It oozes out. So it literally oozes out of the mountain. It's like rock sap. It's like rock sap. It's black, and it's highly nutritious. Uh, even in the 1980s, when the Olympic athletes in Russia were accused of being on steroids, they found out that they were actually been given shalajit because it, it works as an anabolic as well. 
and it builds muscles. It's a big dose in there. The second big main ingredient in there is a volcanic zeolite concentrate. And this, what this formula is designed to do, the shilajit and the zeolites have a real strong negative charge. All the metals and chemicals and PCBs and VOCs have positive charges. So these go in, they grab it, and then they safely eliminate it through the body so you can become healthy. I mean, the, this is an amazing formula. I wish I actually had it, but because this was an exclusive InfoWars Life product, you're the only one in the world that has this formula now. And, uh, you know, there is going to be a limited supply available when you sell out because you can only harvest this once a year. How do people take it? How is it recommended that this be done? Just a daily, daily dose? Yeah, daily dose. Uh, the instructions are on the label. You know, of course, I, I kind of modify it for each individual. It depends on what your lifestyle is. I mean, the, honestly, the best thing to do is for you to avoid all these chemicals and toxins in your environment and try to identify them and start slowly reducing them. But personally, I, I'm going to probably take it every day, every other day, and I'll probably go with about a dropper full to maybe two dropper fulls. Uh, and I, and I, I don't expose myself to any chemicals. InfoWarsLife.com. Please also support our local AM and FM affiliates, support their local sponsors, or become a sponsor and spread the word. Because these aren't just great products. This is how we fund this independent operation. We're not taxpayer-funded like MSNBC or NPR, and neither is your local station. So support them, folks. This is a war. I'm running for president. Everyday Americans need a champion, and I want to be that champion. I'm hitting the road to earn your vote, and I hope you'll join me on this journey. A funny thing happened on the way to the FEMA camp. It seems some comedians focused on Hillary one night. Something peculiar, something for everyone, a comedy tonight. Hello, Hillary. It's nice to see you. <laughs> you look great. Nothing like a, uh, there's nothing like a skirt suit with shoulder pads to say I'm all woman. <laughs> she looks like she's playing linebacker for TJ Maxx. It's the kind of outfit that you see, who wore it better, Caitlyn Jenner or Hillary Clinton? And Her Majesty was not amused with jokes aimed at her. Jamie Masada, who opened the famous Laugh Factory in L.A. over 30 years ago, told Judicial Watch that the Clinton campaign demanded the comedy video be taken down. Well, yes, the whole night. <laughs> demanded the personal contact information of the comedians and threatened to put him out of business if he didn't take down the video. Hillary's deadly serious. She's well acquainted with Saul Alinsky's 12 Rules for Radicals. As a college senior, she wrote a 92-page thesis on it, which the Clintons kept blocked from 1993 through 2001. And rule number five is ridicule is man's most potent weapon. So she had no trouble showing her Machiavellian dictatorship side. Today she came after the comedians, but many still love her nevertheless because she's a woman. Trump also said, he really, he actually said that he doesn't know about Hillary because we shouldn't have a woman in office because what about when they get their period? She's 69 years old. She hasn't had a period since the 20th century. Some say she loves women. I like how you didn't trip off the um, bill in uh... Monica Lewinsky and stuff. I feel like he was hitting that too on the side. They probably best of friends, cuz. You know, they both like the same thing. You know what I would love, Hillary, I was thinking about it, and I would love if you become president, then you divorce Bill, and then you marry a bitch. Thunderers! Philanderers! Cupidity! Timidity! Mistakes! Hey! Bumbless, bumbless, bumbless. Is Hillary an advocate for women, or will she destroy any woman who gets in the way of her power? Is this the kind of person we want as president? So tonight she comes after the comedians. We'll see the tragedy of her tyranny tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> for Infowars.com, I'm David Knight.
right, well, coming up, you're going to find out how to make sure freedom gets the last laugh. Alex Jones is going to tell you about a national contest to stop Hillary's attack on free speech. Now, if you want to go to Infowars.com right now, look at the article, National Contest to Stop Hillary's Attack on Free Speech. Shoot a video to make fun of Hillary. $6,000 in cash prizes. There, all the rules are right there uh, for you. You got to follow them. And Infowars and Alex Jones will be choosing the winner. This is going to be a quick one month turnaround. We want the funniest, most outrageous satire and comedy that is guaranteed to make Hillary's blood boil. <sighs> <laughs> she can laugh. She laughs at everything else, but she can't laugh at herself. I mean, it's crazy. Now, coming up, we have got our reporter Joe Biggs there in Paris. He's got to wrap up with everything we know now about the Paris attacks one week later. <laughs> Joe Biggs here with Infowars.com. Now, we came out here to investigate the horrendous massacre that unfolded on Friday the 13th last week. Tomorrow will be the one-week anniversary in which over 100 people lost their lives and over 300 more were wounded. ISIS terrorists came in with guns, explosives, grenades, and attacked this area all across Paris. There were seven different sites. I remember sitting there and watching the news and getting goosebumps because it was such a horrible sight to see. The video, the footage of two people hanging out of the windows at the Bataclan Theater trying to avoid being shot at by these terrorists. Meanwhile, on the inside, 89 people were executed by two disgusting cowards. Now ISIS has taken completely and full credit of this massacre and have threatened to do more stuff. We also uncovered another raid that happened. We were able to go in and investigate what happened in the St. Denis area, which is just north of Paris. And in that raid, they were actually able to end up killing the so-called mastermind behind the massacre that happened last Friday. There was also France's first female suicide bomber. Now this is the first time a woman has ever strapped on a vest like this and blown herself up. Now the extent of the damage of that vest through her spine out into the streets and inside that rubble, they were able to find evidence of another attack that these guys were planning. These are ruthless, bloodthirsty psychopaths. Now, as the information began to unfold throughout our journey here in Paris, investigating the attacks, we found out that numerous members of this terrorist cell actually worked out of and lived in Molenbeek, Belgium. So Paul Joseph Watson and Michael Zimmerman and myself took a train all the way into Brussels. And from there, we walked 40 minutes into the Molenbeek uh, neighborhood, which is basically the capital, the jihadi capital of Europe. The fact that a crew of three people could get on a train, go into Brussels, no passports checked, no bags checked, walk around through there, come back on the train back into France. Once again, no passports checked, no bags checked shows you just how wide open these borders are. And it's not that we are intolerable or we can't stand refugees or that we don't want to grant uh, safe passage for people who are going through hard times, but it's the fact that there really are people out there who are sick-minded, who are psychopaths, who intend to do harm, who want to kill people, can easily go through and take a train and come into the center of Paris and do horrendous acts. That's all we're trying to get across to people is that what you're hearing in the news about no-go zones, it's not a lie, that is happening. When you hear that the borders are wide open, but then you hear politicians coming out and saying, no, we should leave them wide open. That's a big negative because this is the kind of stuff that is going to happen today alone. 
over seven Syrian refugees crossing the Laredo border in Texas, more coming in to Louisiana. Others have been brought in disguised as refugees in Bowling Green, Kentucky. There was footage on an ABC report showing them with shoulder fired missiles with AK 47s with different types of machine guns and grenades. There's a serious problem.